Hi. Today we will know how to determine the density of a uniformly shaped solid. Instructions. To determine the density, you need to remember that density equal mass over volume or D equal M divided by V. Mass will be measured by digital scale, two pan balance, sensitive scale, or a treble beam balance. Here is the digital scale, two pan balance, sensitive scale, and the triple beam balance. Here we will use the digital scale, which is the easiest one. And this is the first part of this tutorial. Then we will move on to the measurement of the uniformly shaped solid dimensions using vernier caliber. To determine the volume of a cube or cuboid, we need to measure its length, width, and height. Since volume equals length times width times height. Procedure. Let's begin with mass. To measure the mass, we will use the digital scale. Here are some samples of the uniformly shaped solids that we will determine their density. Let's begin with this one, but at first we need to turn on the digital scale. It will calibrate, then it will show the current mass. We use this one to show you that the mass will be measured according to the increase on this one. Be careful for the units. This is, will be in kilogram. We can change this unit to be in gram, libra pound, O's, and so on. Let's adjust it into kilogram to make it the simplest way. As you can see, as soon as you put the object on the scale, the screen will show you the current mass. For this one, it is 0 0.0592 kg, which means approximately 59.2 grams. But don't forget, we will always use the SI units. Let's try another one. This one shows 46 grams or 0 0.046 kilogram. Another one. And the last one. As you can see, none of these will be equal to the other in their densities even if their dimensions are almost equal. Why? Because their masses are totally different. Now we can move on to the how to measure the dimensions of any of these solid shape buds. Let's put it aside and move on for the dimensions. Here we will use this copper cube to know how to measure its dimensions using the vernier caliber. The 
the vernier caliber can be used in many ways. We can use it to measure the outer radius or the dimensions and inner dimensions or inner radius. Also, we can use it to measure the depth. Let's take this cap as an example before we proceed to the cube. We can use it to measure the outer radius like this one. Be careful, this wheel will be used to open and close. Don't force the two jaws to open it or to close it. This is not suitable. We will use this wheel. This one also is used for locking the current measurement. Let's say that you already measured this one and you need to save it. You can use this one like this. Then you can't move it again unless you will release it again. We will use the uh, vernier caliper to measure the outer radius using this side of Joe's, like this one. We close it till it's almost touching the outer radius. And we will know how to take the reading from the scale. If we need to measure the inner radius or diameter, we will use the smaller jaws, like this one, open it till it's almost touching the inside of this cap. Also, we will know how to use it or read it. Again, and now the last part, how to determine the depth of a body. Since it is hollow, we can use this end to measure the depth as we mentioned before. Put this end on the edge of the cap, move this wheel till its tip touches the base. So this is the depth and we will know how to read it from here. Okay. Now, we need to measure the dimensions of this cube. Don't forget, we have three dimensions. Its length, its width, and the height. I marked these here to make it easy for you to distinguish between each of them. Now we will use these jaws since we are trying to measure the outer dimensions like this, almost touching. This is for the length and we will record in our sheet that the length equals the width equals and the height. If we finished uh, measuring the length, we will move to the width, then we will move to the height. Be careful, they mustn't be the same. Maybe it looks like a cube, but it can be a cuboid with a very small difference. Again, this is for height, uh, sorry, for uh, the length, the width, and the height. Now, how to use it, or how to get the reading from the vernier caliper. As you can see, let's open the wire, there are two scales on this ruler. The first one is in centimeters, as you can see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. While the upper one uses a larger unit, which is in inch. 0, 1, 
two. Let's open it again so you can see three and so on. Since we are using the SI units, we will use the centimeter scale and we will convert it into meters. As you can see also, this window has another scale which is divided into 10 portions or 10 parts. The first one for the reading in centimeters. So as you can see, this is totally closed and the two marks are aligned. If you can't see this scale or these portions, we can use this pencil to make it much clearer like this one. Be gentle using this. So it will be much easier to see it. Okay. Now, let's say that you used it to measure the length as you can see it's easy to remove it which means it is almost the same okay use this screw to lock the reading and Let's watch how to read it. As you can see, the zero mark is before the two centimeters with only almost one portion, which means that this reading is not two centimeters. It's, it is less than two centimeters. So it will be 1.9. Let's record this like. 1.9 How to determine the next digit? Let's see the nine digits or the, sorry the nine marks on the smaller scale in this window none of these will be aligned to one of the larger scale unless or only one mark. Can you see it? None of these except for the eighth one. How did I know? Let's count. Don't count the zero one, the first one, which points to zero. And let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. The eighth mark is the perfectly aligned one. So this reading will be 1.98 centimeter. Let's use the vernier caliper again to measure the width. It's almost the same, but to make sure, we need to release this one and try to redetermine the width. Use the screw and we read it again. Yes, it's less than 1.9, which means that it will be 1.8 for the last digit sorry it was perfectly aligned to 1.9 centimeter let's move on to the last dimension which is the height we measured length, the width, and now we will measure the height. 
let's release the screw, open the jaws, and measure the height. And use the screw to lock it again. Let's see what is the reading. more than 1.9 centimeters with how many with only four sorry uh, six knots let's count one two three four five while the six is one is the perfectly aligned which means this reading will be 1.96 centimeter thanks for the vernier caliper let's move on to our calculations here the length is 1.98 centimeters, which means 1.98 times 10 power negative 2 meters. The width is also the same, 1.9 times 10 power negative 2 meters. The height is 1.96 times 10 power negative 2 meters. To determine the volume, we will multiply length times width times height. So we will use these numbers 1.98 times 1.9 times 1.96 or multiply by 10 power negative 6 and I think that you are smart enough to know why this is the volume in cubic meters be careful for the units this is a very important issue in physics as we mentioned before density will be equal to the mass that we used the digital scale to measure divided by the volume so if we use the SI units the mass is let's say 56 joule like this this is in kilogram divided by the value of this volume as you will uh, calculate which is some number the most important thing the final value and the measuring unit which is kilogram per cubic meter again this is a very important thing in physics be careful with units I hope that you, you already enjoyed this uh, tutorial and good luck in your measurement and determination.